Why doesn't the Philippines build skyscrapers over 350 meters tall, despite strong economic growth? The Philippines is often regarded as one of Asia's rising economic stars. With one of the fastest growing economies in the world, a thriving BPO sector, a booming construction industry, and increasing demand from multinational companies, the country's economic prospects are looking brighter than ever. In major cities such as Makati, Taguig, Pasig, Quezon City, Manila, Muntinlupa, Cebu, Mandau, Lapu-Lapu, Clark, Davao, Cagayan de Oro, and Iloilo. There's no shortage of skyscrapers. In fact, the Philippines, with 171 skyscrapers, ranks third in the ASEAN region and tenth in the world in terms of the number of skyscrapers. But despite these impressive numbers, the country has yet to build a skyscraper over 350 meters tall. This raises the question, why does the Philippines, with its robust economy and growing demand for high-rise properties, still lag behind neighboring countries in constructing super-tall buildings? Let's explore the real reasons behind the absence of an iconic skyscraper, one that reaches over 350 meters into the sky, in today's special video titled, Asia's Super Tall Buildings, Why the Philippines is Left Behind. Economic Growth, Demand, and Skyscraper Construction, Debunking the Myths Contrary to what some might assume, Economic factors are not the primary barrier to constructing skyscrapers above 350 meters in the Philippines. In fact, the country's economy has been growing steadily for over a decade, with GDP projections set to surpass that of Singapore by 2025 and Thailand by 2027, according to World Bank projections. The demand for office spaces, condominiums, and mixed-use developments in urban areas has never been higher driven by both local and foreign investments. Multinational companies are flocking to the Philippines, especially in key business districts like BGC, Makati, Ortigas, Quezon City, specifically Triangle Park, Eastwood City, and Araneta Center. Philinvest Corporate City in Alabang, Bay City in the Manila Paranaque area, Cebu IT Park, Ayala Center Cebu, and the newly developed CBDs of Bridgetown, South Aka, and Greenfield. The booming BPO sector continues to expand, and there's a significant influx of foreign capital, including from Japanese investors who are particularly bullish about the Philippine high-rise construction market. Given this economic momentum, it's clear that demand for high-rise buildings is not lacking. The Philippines already boasts a large number of skyscrapers, ranking third in the region, yet only one building exceeds 300 meters in height, the Metrobank Center at 318 meters, but the height up to its roof is only 259 meters, which is a favorite topic for humiliation among trolls and detractors. This stark contrast to neighboring countries that have constructed iconic super-tall structures such as Malaysia's Merdeka 118, 644 meters, and Indonesia's Signature Tower, 638 meters, leaves one wondering why the Philippines has not followed suit in building taller structures. Regulatory and Policy Challenges One of the primary factors limiting the construction of super-tall buildings in the Philippines is regulatory and policy-related. While there's demand for high-rise developments, the complexity of navigating the country's urban planning and zoning regulations presents a significant hurdle. Local government units LGUs, have specific policies that govern the maximum allowable height of buildings in certain areas, often reflecting concerns over environmental factors, infrastructure capacity, and the preservation of cultural and historical landmarks. In many instances, developers encounter delays in securing the necessary permits, as well as challenges related to land use and property rights. The lengthy permitting process can result in projects being put on hold or abandoned altogether. A concrete example of this can be seen with the high-profile project adjacent to Robinson's Galleria in Ortigas. This tower, envisioned to have 88 stories and be one of the tallest in the world at the time, 
began construction in the mid-1990s, with plans for eight basement levels of parking. However, the Green Hills East Homeowners Association opposed the project, citing regulatory and local concerns. Despite its potential, the project was eventually halted, leaving behind a large excavation site that is still visible today. Moreover, the urban landscape of many Philippine cities is often constrained by narrow road networks and inadequate infrastructure, making it difficult to support the construction of buildings that exceed 350 meters. Even though the government's Build, 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 and Build Better More programs have expanded infrastructure projects nationwide, the focus has been more on improving transportation, public works, and residential developments rather than incentivizing the construction of super-tall skyscrapers. This lack of dedicated policies to support high-rise building projects has led to an imbalance in the types of structures being developed. Lack of government support for super-tall buildings Another key factor in the success of super-tall skyscrapers around the world is the strong backing of governments. Iconic skyscrapers like Malaysia's Petronas Towers, 452 meters, and Dubai's Burj Khalifa, 828 meters, came into existence with significant government involvement, providing financial support, easing regulations, and fostering an environment that encouraged developers to push the boundaries of what was possible. The Petronas Towers, for example, were part of Malaysia's push to showcase its economic strength and modernity on the global stage, and this level of ambition was only possible with the government's full backing. In contrast, projects without government support often fail to materialize or stagnate. For example, the construction of Saudi Arabia's Jeddah Tower, which was planned to reach over 1,000 meters, stalled in part due to a lack of continued financial backing and political challenges. Without the necessary government assistance, such ambitious projects can falter, regardless of their initial promise. The Philippines has yet to see the kind of comprehensive government support for super-tall buildings that would make such projects viable. Without this, developers remain cautious, and even ambitious proposals often struggle to gain the momentum needed to break ground. Environmental Considerations and Risk Management The Philippines is located in a seismically active region known as the Pacific Ring of Fire, making it prone to earthquakes. Additionally, the country experiences frequent typhoons and tropical storms, especially in urban areas like Metro Manila and Cebu. These environmental risks necessitate that any high-rise construction must meet stringent safety standards, particularly for earthquake resistance and wind resilience. While skyscrapers in cities like Singapore or Kuala Lumpur are built with advanced engineering techniques that allow for heights exceeding 350 meters, replicating this in the Philippines presents significant challenges. The costs associated with earthquake-resistant and storm-proof designs are considerably higher in the Philippines due to its geographical vulnerabilities. For instance, in Metro Manila, where a major fault line runs, the cost of ensuring that a super-tall skyscraper can withstand seismic activity makes these projects more financially prohibitive. Unlike other countries in the region where such risks are less pronounced or better managed through infrastructure development, the Philippines faces an added layer of complexity. The fear of potential structural damage from earthquakes and typhoons dissuades developers from pursuing projects that exceed 350 meters in height. Moving toward the future The absence of skyscrapers over 350 meters in the Philippines is a complex issue rooted in regulatory, environmental, and logistical factors, rather than a lack of demand or economic capacity. Despite the country's strong economic performance, the challenges of building super-tall skyscrapers in an earthquake-prone, typhoon-ravaged region, combined with bureaucratic red tape and limited land availability, make such projects more difficult to realize. However, with increasing demand, expanding infrastructure, and technological advancements, the future could hold more opportunities for the Philippines to join the ranks of Asian countries in constructing taller buildings. 
In the coming years, it is likely that the Philippine skyline will evolve as urban planning and construction technology continue to improve. This has been Fun Fact, and thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video and learned something new about why the Philippines is lagging behind in building super tall skyscrapers, make sure to hit that like button and share your thoughts in the comments below. And if you want to see more content like this, don't forget to subscribe and ring the notification bell so you never miss an update. See you in the next one.